What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to build a simple twitter bot in python so let us get right into it now as always when we're using twitter in python we need to visit the developer.twitter.com website which is the developer portal you need to make sure you have a twitter account you need to make sure that you have a developer account that you can just activate it's not too complicated and you go to projects and apps and you go to overview and then you just create a new app now i have one already from my neural nine sentiment analysis video um, it's not too complicated to set up an app. I'm not going to do the whole process you just created. Uh, and the important thing is that you're going to get four keys. You're going to get, um, what was it? You're going to get the access token, the access token secret, and then two other tokens, one secret and one public. Uh, those are important. You need to get them. You need to copy them. I think you get them by uh, clicking on keys and tokens, and then you can get the API key and the API secret key. And then you get the access token and the access token secret key. So you can regenerate them and then you just have to write them down somewhere. So in my case, I have a file called Twitter keys. You can name it whatever you want. I have all the four keys that we're going to need in this file. You can also uh, put them in a file or you can put them directly in the code if you want to. I'm not going to put them directly in the code because I'm recording. So you would see my keys. You could use my API and then post on my Twitter profile, which is of course, uh, not something that I want you to do. So if you don't have to hide anything, you can just paste it in a code. Otherwise, uh, I recommend using a file and maybe even encrypting it. I'm not going to do it for this video. Now, uh, once you have that, you need to open up a command line or a terminal and you need to say pip install tweepy. This is the library that we're going to use tweepy for tweeting in Python. Uh, I'm not going to do it. Or actually, I can just press enter and you're going to see that I have already installed it. So it's not going to do anything here. Uh, and once you have installed Tweepy, you need to import it. And then we can start with the actual keys. Now, the important thing is we need first, uh, we need to first get all the keys, we need to store them, we need to authenticate, we need to set up the API, and then we can start uh, coding the actual bot or doing actual stuff on Twitter. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say all keys, this is going to be a uh, list of keys, we're going to say all keys is open Twitter keys or whatever you call your file in reading mode. And we're going to get the content immediately. We're going to say dot read and then we're going to split lines. So we're going to get all the individual lines as individual elements of the all keys object. So then we're going to say API key equals all keys uh, zero API key secret equals all keys one. And by the way, of course, if you're not reading it from a file, you can just paste the actual keys here. So you can say API key equals string, and then you can uh, put in the key directly if you want to. And then we're going to say access token equals all keys two, and access token secret equals all keys three. There you go. So now we have all the keys, uh, depending on the way you put them in. But that's, uh, that's how you have it, you have four variables with the API key, the API secret key, the access token and the access token secret. And what we now do is we create an authenticator. So we say authenticator equals tweepy dot o auth handler. And what we do here is we pass the API key and we pass the API key secret in order to authenticate. And then what we do is we need to set the access token so that we can actually use the app. So we can say, uh, or we have to say authenticator dot set access token. And then we pass access token and access token secret. There you go. And the last thing we need to do before we can start with the actual actions is we need to say API is tweepy.api and we're going to pass the authenticator that already has the keys and we're going to say wait on rate limit equals true. So that is the basic setup. All right, so now we're connected to the Twitter API and we can do all sorts of things. We can follow people, we can like stuff, we can iterate through stuff, we can post, we can change descriptions and so on. So what this video is going to be about is just showing the functionality so you can then uh, define functions, you can then define an assistant if you want to or a basic 
thing where you can enter commands, but I'm just going to show you how to do the individual things. You can then, uh, you know, create all sorts of algorithms to do certain things for you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to follow people. And in order to follow people, you just need to say API dot create friendship. And then you pass the name of the person you want to follow. Now, in this case, I'm going to follow my other account. So uh, I'm currently locked into neural nine. And I also have the personal account Florian Dedov, which is my personal profile. So I'm following right now, I can unfollow here. So I'm no longer following myself. Uh, and then I can go back to my profile, for example, and I can go into PyCharm and say, okay, follow Florian Dedov. And then it's going to, um, to follow me. So if I run this script now, and we don't have any mistakes, it should just terminate without telling me anything. And now if I look at Florian Dedov again, Twitter is always lagging, I don't know why. There you go. If I go to my profile, you can see that if I refresh this, I am following the profile. As you can see, now I can unfollow again. Uh, even though I unfollowed already, it's following my profile. So this is a basic way to follow people. And of course, you can now go ahead and iterate over a list of names or patterns or whatever, or just browse some people and then you can create friendships, basically following them. Uh, this is for some people, maybe a strategy to follow people, maybe they follow back, maybe someone notices you or something like that. Uh, all sorts of things that you can do here. So let's go to something more basic, which is not just following but uh, posting something on Twitter. So you can post stuff on Twitter by just saying API dot update status. And those of you who follow me on Twitter will see this message on my Twitter page right now. And uh, you will know now when you watch the video that I was recording a video back then. And here I'm just going to say hey, or not hey, let's say I am currently recording a video on uh, coding a Twitter bot in Python. This is it. So if I now run this script, we should see that tweet on my profile. So if I go to neural nine, you're going to see I'm currently recording a video on coding a Twitter bot in Python. This is it. So those people who are going to see this tweet and like this tweet uh, are going to remember that this was the tweet that you're seeing in this video right now. Um, and what we can also do is we can update the profile. I'm not sure if I want to do that though. So we can go ahead and say API dot update. And then we need to say update profile. And we can set the description to something else. So description equals something. Now the question is, do I want to do that or not? Because I think you believe me, even though uh, I don't want to demonstrate that to you. So I'm not going to do that because I would have to copy all of that and reset it. Uh, but basically, by doing that, you change the description of your Twitter profile by just saying API .update profile, and then you pass some text and you can replace this stuff uh, here. So that's uh, those are three basic functionalities, updating your status, updating your profile and following people. All right, so let us look at some more functionalities that are maybe not as simple as a one liner. So let's delete that. And let's do something like um, uh, getting information about a user. How do we do that? We define a user object, you can call it user or whatever you want. And we say API dot get user, and then we can pass a name. Now I can pass neural nine here, or I can pass any other user, I'm going to pass my other profile again, my personal profile. And I'm going to get that user. Now I can do very simple stuff like printing the name of the user. So print uh, user dot name, which is actually the one thing that I passed. But I can also print the description here. For example, so if I run this script, you're going to see uh, the name and the description as you can see here owner of neural nine. Um, and we can also go ahead and take a look at, at the followers. So this is not a one liner, but we can actually iterate over the list of the followers. So we can say, for follower in user dot followers, we can just go ahead and say, um, follower. Let's make an F string out of it follower follows user dot name. And maybe you're going to see some of you guys here. 
but we have a problem here. What do we have? We actually need to print follower.name because follower itself is a user object. So follower.name follows user.name. There you go. And you can see here, okay, in row nine follows Lauren Dedov. This is myself and Vincent, Drew, uh, all these people down here. Maybe some of you guys are amongst them. Uh, and of course, we can change this to neural nine. And you're going to see that we get maybe some similar names, but maybe also uh, some different names. So you can see some people following neural nine here. Um, so this is how you can iterate over the followers or through the uh, through the followers. One thing that we can also do is we can not just iterate over users that are followers of a certain profile, we can also iterate over posts, for example, in the timeline. And what we do for that is we have to create uh, a variable again, let's call it tweets home, which is just just some tweets on my homepage. And we're going to say API dot home timeline. And I'm going to say, okay, give me 10 posts from that timeline. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, okay, for tweet in tweets home. So for all these tweets that I have now gathered, I'm going to say, okay, if the tweet dot author dot name, so the username of the author of the tweet, if that is not myself, so if that is not neural nine, I'm going to like that tweet because I don't want to like my own tweets. That's a little bit pathetic. Uh, so if the name is not neural nine, actually, I'm not sure if I have to say neural nine like that. Uh, if it's case sensitive or not, but I'm going to leave it like that. Um, and we're going to say, okay, if author or let's let's make it like that. If tweet author name dot lower, just to make sure um, is not equal to neural nine, then we're going to say also if not tweet favorite it, which basically means if I have not liked this tweet yet, because if you try to like a tweet that you have already liked, uh, you're going to get an exception and the program is going to crash. So you want to make sure you're not liking your own stuff, you want to make sure that you're not liking something that you have already liked. And if those two conditions are met, you're just going to say API dot create favorite, and you're going to pass the tweet dot ID. And we can also print a message here, we can say print F string liking tweet. Uh, and we can pass the author here. So tweet dot author dot name. And you can see who posted this tweet. So there you go. Let's run this. And you can see I'm stopping this here, you can see, okay, Python Software Foundation, Free Code Camp, Lex Fridman, DeepMind, uh, Harrison, Kingsley, I think that's uh, Syntax. Um, and if we go on Twitter, I'm not sure if we're going to see these posts or these tweets that I have just liked. But if they are on the timeline here, there you go, Python Software Foundation liked, I didn't like this manually. This post also liked this post also liked Lex Fridman's post also liked and so on. So you can see that it works, the script, the bot just liked a couple of posts from my timeline. Now we can do something similar here, but a little bit differently, we can also iterate over the timeline of a specific user. So instead of just looking at the home timeline, we can target a specific user and like their posts. So if we say something like tweets, uh, user, not the most creative name I know, and we're going to say API dot user timeline, and uh, user ID is going to be user uh, dot ID. So basically the ID of Oh, actually, we did, we deleted that, right. So let's just remove all of this here. And let's create a user object again, let's say user. How did I define it user equals API dot get user and we can pass something like Lex Fridman, for example. And now we can go ahead and say, okay, uh, for tweet in tweets user. So for all the tweets uh, in the timeline that we can access with the API, we're going to say, okay, if we haven't favorited that tweet, so if we haven't liked that tweet, we're going to like it, and we're going to say API dot create, not friendship, but favorite uh, tweet dot ID. There you go. 
So we're not going to print any messages, but we can go to Lex Friedman's um, Twitter profile and you're going to see that I haven't liked the most recent posts. So I have liked this one, but a lot of them are not liked by me. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run this script and we're going to see if this is going to change. I'm not sure how long it will go. Maybe it will like 10 or 20 tweets. Maybe it will like 100. Maybe it's not going to stop unless I terminate it. No, it terminated itself. So let's see, reload the page here and we're going to see that probably most of the posts here are liked now or favorited. Uh, there you go, favorited, favorited, like, like. Uh, there you go, liked, liked. As you can see, this works. I targeted this specific user. I liked all the posts. So this is also something that we can use, uh, that we can do with TweetPie. All right, so last but not least, I wanna show you how you can search for stuff on Twitter using the TweetPie module. And I have actually showed you that in the sentiment analysis tutorial already, but we're going to do it again here. So we need to create a cursor. We need to say tweets equals TweetPie dot cursor and we're going to pass here the api dot search we're going to pass a search term which is q equals and we're going to pass something like brains for example and we're going to pass the language which is english so en now in order to get the actual tweets we need to say dot items and how many items we want let's say 10 for example and then we can go ahead and print those by saying i hope we can print a list comprehension uh we're going to say tweet uh no tweet for tweet in tweets that should work there you go so if we now run this we should see a bunch of tweets or actually we are going to see tweet objects there you go those are the objects we need to get the text from the tweets so tweets.text because we're not interested in some metadata here unless you are of course uh, but there you go, you can see, okay, at someone literally didn't say anything bad about their collective brains are the size of a P, supporting pal, okay, we, we don't want to get political here. Uh, so we're going to skip that part. But however, you can just enter some search term, for example, you can also say Bitcoin. Um, and we're going to run that again. I don't get how Elon can run four companies, have six kids with two different women trying to get humans to Mars and still find and then probably something about uh, Bitcoin. Now, if we if we run the script, we're going to get the same results. So maybe I can actually I'm not sure if we can index list comprehensions, but it looks like we can. So maybe we can see the full tweet there. Uh, no, it's not the same. So maybe changes or maybe it was not index zero, but index one. Uh, I don't know. However, what you can do is you can iterate over the tweets. We can you can look for stuff. You can also add some uh, more stuff like since if you want to uh, narrow down the the time frame. So you can say, okay, I don't I don't want to see any tweets that are older than ten days, uh, which I think you're not able to query any tweets that are older than seven days, anyways, with the default version of the API. However, this is how you can iterate over tweets. You can look at the metadata. You can look at the text of the, of those tweets. Um, but that's also quite a nice feature. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.